now. You are stuck in it. We are all stuck in it as we are in many things. Before we get started, the message of the week, and boy, does this one apply today. So something I heard as a teenager stuck with me, morphed it some along the way, but the basic premise is if you've got your head in the game, things don't always turn out the way you thought they would, but they often turn out the way you expected. Today's show may be a perfect reflection of that as the guest that I had planned to come on has not signed on yet. I don't know where he is. We're not in the station. We're all remote, so we can kind of do what we want. So definitely not what I thought it was going to be, but you can bet this is going to turn out maybe even better than the way that we expected it. So the topic of today, my guest, uh, Matt Perella, he is a managing broker for EXB Realty. Uh, He manages the definitely New York City, possibly New York State, possibly even the Northeast. Um, They are a cloud-based real estate brokerage. Uh, And what was fascinating, Matt and I have been neighbors and friends for a long time in the Windsor Terrace uh, neighborhood of Brooklyn, representing the Fort Hamilton station. And uh, we've had many, many, many conversations over the year about residential real estate, about commercial real estate, about just uh, business, the goings and comings of what happens in local communities like the cool one that we live in. And about two years ago, he informed me that his company, EXP Realty, was shedding their Midtown office, that they were they, they had a centralized office in Midtown where clients would come in. And for real estate agents, for those of you that don't know kind of what they do, most of their work, a lot of their work, especially the one, the stuff that makes the, the real, the real nuggets, the real bread and butter is, uh, is out. You're out showing spaces. Um, and they found that, first of all, for those of you that don't know, rent in uh, Midtown Manhattan is super duper expensive, like some of the craziest stuff on the planet. Um, and when it, you have this office that's kind of for show, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, about face and, and not as functional, not where you spend most of your time. It really uh, becomes difficult to rationalize spending all that money where we're talking, I mean, it, easy, easy five figures and in the upper five figures uh, when, when you're in that kind of situation. And it looks like we may, we may have a live one. Hey, Matt, are, are you with us? I am with you now. Sorry about that. What's going on? All right. I can't see you, though. Are you just on the call? You're not going to show us your face? You're not going to show us your pretty face? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let me see. It's all good. Can... Let's just chat for right now. We've got, we got a solid 10 minutes for the break, and we can kind of revamp then. Cool. So I just gave everybody – I don't know if you were listening. I talked mad shit about you. Did you? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> no, I gave Uh-oh. you a proper, a proper introduction. Let's welcome – Matt Perella to the show, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My apologies for being a minute late. I was out. I went out for a run, Jeremiah, and I had to take a quick shower before I jumped on. Hey, you. right, because you know, so close. I don't want to smell you through the through the phone. No, we don't want smell <laughs> vision going on here. No, nah, no, nah, it's all good, brother. You got to work out. I did my workout this morning too. Um, so basically, all I did was I I I mentioned you know exp and 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 i and i told everybody who you were and how kind of we got to know each other here in the neighborhood but i was just explaining how it was it was a couple years ago where you all decided to let go of your office space which is which is way ahead of the kind of work from home scene everybody is is in now and uh yeah, I just wanted to talk about first off, like what was the rationale behind that? Why did you know every everybody else has got like the 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 office space, and you guys were like, nah, we don't need no. This. So so what happened is really what it was born out of was the founder of the company, Glenn, is um he was big before a lot of people were doing. It. He was big into internet leads, mm-hmm. and he's on the West Coast. He's at, based out of Washington State, and he would get a lot of leads and just hand them out for a percentage to people in different states. He was running a rather large team doing quite well. Back in 08, you know, 07, 08, we had the, you know, I, I call it the correction. I don't like to call it the um, the crash. Yeah, I don't, I don't right. refer to it as that, but, um, you know, to start with Lehman Brothers and other other uh, financial giants started to topple. And, um, you know, it was some, somewhat of a rough time. And he decided then – why would we have a company that has all this overhead? What's the point? And, and, the, and the, 
eXp was born out of the mentality that a real estate brokerage is nothing without the agents. The agents are the ones who go out and bring in the money. Mm-hmm. Not like, you, you know what I mean? You don't have a warehouse full of things that you're selling. Right. So he said, why should the agents not be compensated properly? So he started eXp Realty with the idea of not opening up all of these expensive retail spaces, which everybody now is living in realizing, wow, we didn't always need all these, these retail spaces. Right. Yes. So <laughs> it was born out of that. And then what happened? That's 2009. Okay. And then in 2013, he said, I want the agents to have ownership. So he bought a sh- you know, they bought a shell company and started trading over the counter, the stock. I think it started out, it came out at a dollar. It wow. probably dropped to 19 cents. Now it's, our stock is faring better than other real estate company stocks because we're not just eXp Realty, we're eXp World Holdings. Mm-hmm. So we uplisted to the NASDAQ in, eight, was it 18? I think in, in 2018, we uplisted NASDAQ. And um, so I was there for the bell ringing in January when we had, a, we had an oh, event. No. Nice. So, so what we have is our company is eXp World Holdings, which owns eXp Realty. And the, the idea behind it is everybody that's in the company gets stock. So when you join, you do your first transaction, the company awards you stock. Mm-hmm. I bring somebody into the company, they do their first transaction, the company awards me stock and them stock. And the idea is, right. you know, people are going to have more pride and, and retention is going to be better. If people own stock, they're not going to be so quick. You know, the, the uh, attrition rate is typically real estate brokerages is probably 35% is the numbers I hear. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, we're less than a third of that. We're yeah. not even, I, I don't know, maybe it was 7%, 8%, so I, I believe. And I'd have to check on those numbers to be exactly correct. But if you have stock in the company and the company's taking care of you, less likely to jump from, you know, yeah, one sure. to another to another. Right. It's your, if it's your money, you're going to take it more seriously. And that's always like the conundrum with management. Um, you know, you're trying to get a bunch of other people to represent your business, but they get their little, their little piece, you know, their little, their little earning, but they don't have any ownership or stake in it. That changes the dynamics completely. Right. Right. It's so, you know, and we have this, this great program called, it's called the revenue sharing program where I bring somebody in each year up until they pay their cap, the company awards me a percentage of the business they do not from their pocket, from company dollar, Mm-hmm. Because I help to grow the company. And, right. and then that goes down. You know, I bring you in, you bring somebody else. That, uh, that person is in my second level. And it goes seven levels like that. And it, it is, um, so it is to some extent, people will say it's a you know, multi-level marketing, but right. it, there's no requirement to do it. So I'm the managing broker for eXp Realty for New York. And I have zero requirement to recruit anybody. Mm-hmm. Whereas a traditional brokerage, the manager sitting in the office job is like, how many people can I pull out of the office across the street right? to come over here? I have zero requirement as a managing broker to recruit anybody, but it's in my personal interest to do so. So uh, I do, and I do it in a, um, I, 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 I stick to doing it in an organic way where I talk to people I know or people reach out to me. I do not cold call anybody to do that. I, I, yeah. It's just not my my nature or my style. So yeah, you seem a little too laid back to do that. You're like, I, not, yeah, I don't. That. You know, look, <laughs> I get cold calls not from EXP people. I get cold calls from people from whatever from LinkedIn, many different you know <laughs> facets of 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 business or or whatever you want to call it, you know all the time, and I hate it. So yeah. I say to myself, if I don't like receiving that call, do I want to go out and Rob, be the guy who's yeah. making that call? No, Yo, creepy. It's creepy, man. It's a little, I, it's a little creepy. I had to do it once uh, when I was in grad school, um, just for some quick money. I did it for like three weeks, where we would call the alumni or family of alumni, ask them to, uh, you know, to contribute to the annual fund. And it was like two of the worst weeks of my life. I was, yeah. it was like prison. I was like, "Get me the fuck out of here, man!" It was just awful. It was just totally I get the awful. calls from my daughter's college pretty regularly, I bet. and you're going to for a long time. <laughs> and we. And- the thing is, you're going to get more of them coming up because they're going to be strapped for cash. You just keep September. paying <laughs> your tuition and everything else. And then it's like, wait, I'm already, I got you need more money from me. What? Yeah. Yeah. It, Cause it, it was so great. <laughs> you know what one I get every day, Jeremiah, multiple times a day. What's that? People call me up cause they, they go, all right. So I, I have a salary position with EXP, right? But I also have my own, um, corporation and I still get 1099 income. I sell. Yeah. 
They call every day. I get phone calls. People calling me up, telling me they want to give me money for my business. I get those all who, the time. Who wants to give you money? Come on, right? Nobody giving you, know, you nothing. Would you run around? Give, I, I'm not running around giving out money. So nope. No, 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 and, no. And the other thing I get them from big time lately is uh, it, it's all these. Um, they're not government backed loans, but it's the same kind of thing. Like people posing like they're offering kind of a PPP kind of thing for. Yeah, you know, for the restaurant, for the wine store, for everything, and I'm like, yo, get out of here, you're garbage. I didn't take them from the government. I'm definitely not taking them from. Yeah, you, no, you I've know? had people encourage me to go out and apply, and they're like, you know, Matt, because you still get 10.99 income from selling. Yeah, yeah, you technically could go out and apply, and it's like, look, you know what? I probably could, but I'm getting a salary, so like, I'm sure, there's somebody else who. So it's got to be somebody else who needs it more than I do, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, That's. There's, there's a burden that's going to there's a burden that's going to be carried by society once this is all over, especially for all the companies that took it that, you know, all the people that used it in an ill fashion, you know, that that burden's going to get passed down and everybody's going to have to deal with it. And I, I feel the same. I have no interest in contributing to that. If always- I don't need to like we we rolled our sleeves up and we did it. You know, we're not out of the woods yet, but things are much better. And and we didn't, we didn't borrow a dime. We didn't we're take all any- getting closer to the edge of the forest, though. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> I believe stay, so. I believe let, so. Let's stay in New York. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Prospect Avenue is looking pretty busy again. It's great. Prospect Avenue is great. I mean, most of Brooklyn, I think, is in a is in a pretty good state. I, Manhattan. We'll get we'll, when we come back from our break. We're going to take a break in a minute. We'll talk more about that and like yeah. what the departure from your office space was like and and kind of what's happening there because uh, it's a little bit of a different scene. I mean, some of the residential neighborhoods, and I think that's what really what we're coming down to now is like people have to work from home now. So an area like Winter Terrace, Park Slope, Kensington, these neighborhoods, which are mainly houses, you know, there's business districts dissecting them or intersecting them. Um, you know, they're faring okay because all the people are kind of here. Most people aren't going on like the, especially the European vacations because you can't go no. here right now. No, 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 no. Um, people are people are going kind of regional. People aren't leaving for the entire summer like they've like they've done in the past and. Um, and it's it's put local businesses kind of back in the spotlight where I think the less residential neighborhoods of Manhattan in particular, like there are some spots I know where there's, you know, there's a concentration of people living there and, and they're experiencing the same, but there are entire parts of it where there's not that many people living there and there's nobody going into their offices. So no. what is that? Like what the, this domino effect that's going to, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be a, that they talk about being, you know, back in the forest and not, not being able to see the end. That's a, you know, it's just a few miles away, but it's crazy. The, uh, the, the extent to the depth, how far back in the, in the rabbit hole they are. So we're going to, we're going to take a quick break. We'll pick up with that when we get back and talk about, uh, you know, your company's more about your company's decision to leave the office and kind of what everybody else is dealing with. And maybe, Maybe get your video. You, he's a he's a pretty guy. Got to see his face. All right, everybody. We'll be back in just a few. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. Talk to you all in a bit. Hey, Jim, are you there? You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc.
Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Okay, everybody, we're back once again. It's the Entrepreneurial Web Friday, high noon, talking with my friend and neighbor, EXP Realty Managing Broker, Matt Perella. Matt, are you here? Can we see you? Are they stuck looking at my ugly mug the whole hour? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, okay. but I can't see you. Sorry, I don't know guys. I, I, I'll He's have to, prettier than me. Sorry. Next time that I come on here, I'll have it set up that I'll have my, my face up on the screen with you. Matt's old. He don't know how to work technology either. <laughs> uh, I do to some extent. I'm okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's all good, man. I don't feel like I look that bad today. I was out in the sun yesterday. I took a shower after I worked out. So, um, so when was it exactly that EXP decided to shed the... It, where was the space at? EXP and, was really founded that way, the way that we are. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's been called a for, cloud-based brokerage, right? Well, so, okay. So what happened is... The idea was to, to create the cloud office. This is back before I was with the company. They went to a company called Verbella, mm -hmm. who's a technology company, and Verbella created this cloud office, and it's called EXP World. And what I will do is I will give you a guest pass. You can come in and check it out because it's really cool. Oh, nice. Love and to. Um, I have my own office in there. Um, we have everything from, from a tech outpost to agent services to team services to accounting. Um agent experience, marketing department. You can go in and get any help you need for anything. And it, it's it's really cool. And they've won a lot of awards for this because it's so cool and interactive to the extent that we have speedboats, we have a pirate ship, we have a soccer field. <laughs> I, I kid you not. We go. We can go in and you can play soccer with your avatars. You create your avatar <sighs> and you go in and you, you can give yourself this the is, beard this and is, a mustache. Now I know why you were late to the show. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's, it's really you were funny. you were jet skiing, weren't you? You, do, your you can do everything in that cloud office without having to leave the wow. house. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and Verbella, the company that EXP contracted to to build that, actually last year and earlier in 2019, EXP World Holdings bought Verbella, so we now own that technology. Oh. And it doesn't. Just, I do remember we, you telling me that. Yeah. yeah, we do it for for our um, our cloud office for ourselves, but it, it also we license it out. We have contracts with the U S government, mm -hmm. a number of um, like California and other States online college education. Wow. So you guys so, are about to blow up. Huh? <laughs> so for, well, I'm going to tell you what happened with Verbella is during this time of COVID Verbella has gone insane. So one of my admins that, that works with me on my New York state team was offered, you know, obviously real estate was going to change a little for, for this little short time period here. Yeah. Rather than to be let go, they said, do you want a job? They took her to Verbella. So she's already in the company. She didn't have to, you know, do any, redo any paperwork or anything. She just moved over to Verbella. Mm -hmm. And um, my other admin is actually going to Verbella as well. She was offered a better set, you know, higher pay and more room for advancement. So I'm getting two new admins for New York to, to be on my team. And um, it's it's great. It, it's it's very cool in the sense too that I have people on, on my team that we run New York. So there's me and there's Kim as the other broker. She's based out in Long Island. I then have two people called my compliance payment specialists who look over everybody's files because we keep everything compliant. Yeah, up to where it's supposed to be. Um, and one of them's based in Rochester, New York. One of them's based on Long Island. I have one of my admins was in Buffalo. One's in in Texas. One the one who's coming on is going to be my my admin now. She's based out of Texas. So, you know, we interact with people all over the place, mm. and it also, as an agent, it also helps us to do business all over the place. Right. So I have somebody I partner with now. She's based out of Philadelphia. She's licensed in Pennsylvania, but she's also licensed in New York under my license in the city. And you know, we do business together in mm -hmm. in multiple different places with. You know, clients ranging from multifamily purchasers, hotel clients, 
hotel operators. Um, so I, I just love, I love that whole aspect of it that I get to interact with people all over the place. And we're not just in all 50 States. We're now all across, I think whatever, seven or eight Canadian provinces as yeah. well as Australia and the United Kingdom. Mm. So it's, um, it's very cool in that aspect as well. So somebody on my team, somebody who I, I personally recruited to the company, her mother's family are all in England. So she's bringing people in in England that'll be in my revenue share downline. So I never had that anywhere else. I never had the right. ability to do that anywhere else. So it's, um, I just, I think it's awesome. Basically. No, yeah. it's, it's fascinating. I mean, it's a similar, it's like marketing, you know, you, uh, if you're, if you're, a you know, local brick and mortar place and, and you just market on billboards and like local television networks, that's, the only people you're going to, you know, they're going to notice you. But if you, if you go digital, all of a sudden, you know, the world is your oyster, uh, maybe even some other planets <laughs> for all we know. But, um, yeah, that's the fascinating thing of, of the digital reach. So where was the, um, where was the, you guys had an office though. And, and no, there was never really, there was something you told me that you were like, we, we let go of our office. There's okay. So, the main office of EXP Realty is based in um, Washington State. Okay. And there's an office there, but like, even if you ask the founder of the company, he's like, he's like, nobody really goes in there. Yeah. You know, I think a couple of people might go in there, like human resource or something, but um, we're not that, we're not set up like that. So the way we're set up is do, do you know what, does anybody know what Regis, R E G U S, Regis offices are? I've heard of it before. Yeah. Okay. Regis is around since before we work. Okay. It's quite frankly, better run. Um, so we have, a, we have a corporate account with Regis offices, right? So Regis offices, there's uh, 3000 and something of them around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so we operate at a Regis offices. So anybody who joins us, my, me, anybody else, you can go to any Regis office anywhere and use the business lounge for free. You get right. the Wi-Fi. You can plug in your phone, your laptop. There's a kitchen. There's always clean um, restrooms. Anything you need is there. You can use any Regis office. So as a, for instance, I can technically go into Manhattan. I have 38 different offices I can go into. Right. Right. There's 38 Regis offices. Now, at the state level, we have to have office, a legal address to put people's licenses, right? So I technically ah, have an office. I do yes. have an office with a desk at um, 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. I have one in the financial district at 165 Broadway, right next to the Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And then I have one in downtown Brooklyn at 1 Pierpont Plaza. We also have Regis offices in White Plains, Valley Stream, Long Island, Hop Hog, Long Island, uh, Buffalo, New York. And then we do allow agents, if, if somebody has a, uh, their own brokerage and they want to bring a team over, we allow them on a, you know, we have to approve it. We don't, everybody, yeah. you know, I don't want 75 offices next to each other, but we allow people to have team offices that then they, you know, they maintain. But um, mostly we're not that go and get the big expensive, you know, corner space. How many people are walking in? It's not walking business anymore. Right. Right. Not a walking and, and business anymore. It's definitely not going to be going forward, but I, I seen other places downsize and, and get rid of, uh, you know, their, their like, corner offices with all the windows and you know you need some visibility i think but uh but yeah they were saying that they and, just were they were never in there it was like remember, the admin people that were in there and nobody else right but think about this who's really paying for that yeah the agents are going I, I mean i have three new york city offices right that cost us a, a, a I mean a fraction of what one corner office would cost mm -hmm. right because you're not you you need like you said you need the address you need the physical address for the license which is something i didn't yeah we're about. completely compliant with the new york state department of state right we just you know to, but to have i don't know to have all these big offices and pay all the right you could cut your costs and have your little corner like closet space right and uh yeah, I, I knew i knew one company in manhattan that, i mean technically if you think about this there's regis offices all across new york city i i've gone in to one rockefeller plaza there's a regis office i can go use that office right at Rockefeller Center, Times Square, uh, Financial District, Soho, uh, all over the place, East Side, West Side, all over the place. But we're not paying for all of that. That's the difference. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's really going to be a model going forward. I mean, I don't know 
from other people in other industries you've spoken to who traditionally had office space, especially well, this in is why we're, this is why our tech on Verbella is going crazy right now. Right. And I had another like, guy oh. on, I had another guy on recently who uh, he's the CEO of first, first tube media and it's a live streaming company. And he like put it together cause he loves music and people were live streaming and he was like, okay. And it was kind of like, they were doing well. They were like kind of cruising along and then March hit. And he's just like, holy shit. Like everybody in the world is live streaming right now. So it just like, bam, oh, it yeah. just caught on. I mean, we all can't be Zoom, but uh, <laughs> we can. No, <laughs> we, can, we can be first and second runner up. But uh, yeah, and, and, and I, you know, from speaking to other real estate agents I know, especially uh, in New Jersey and other parts of the country, you know, they they all had to go to like virtual virtual home tours. You know, people were leaving the city and buying homes without ever seeing them. Just taking like an inspector's report, they just saw like a you know. This is literally like sometimes somebody holding their phone, walking through the the, uh, the property, showing it, and people were were buying houses that way. It's insane. We're not talking about that per se necessarily, but um, but the idea that so many people I know, like production companies, same thing, where where you just don't have to have that physical office. Re- people really saw what was necessary for their business to survive because their back was against the wall, and if it wasn't, they were like, "Let's get rid of this." Yeah, it, it um, people are really starting to realize it in this time that, um, and, you know, and look, it's not to say that there is there isn't some benefit sometimes to, to being in person with somebody. We can still do that. Like I said, I can go yep. meet somebody any one of these thirty eight offices in Manhattan. I got one in downtown Brooklyn. I, I could I could be in in Jersey or Connecticut or California or anywhere, and I can go in and use a Regis office if I want to meet somebody in person. We can still do that. It's just to, I know people at other companies that, that are telling me, they're like, they're like, man, I go in the office and there's, we got this huge office with all these desks. And there's two people in the office. Yeah. And they're paying and you go like, 50 grand a month for it probably, oh, right? I mean, I knew one, one place they were, they were spending $110,000 a month right. rent in Manhattan. Right. Before they turn the lights on. Right. <laughs> the agent's got to pay for that. That's the agent's the only one generating money, right? So... I mean, if everybody's going in there every day and, and they, they're getting a benefit from it, that'd be one thing, but I don't see that being the case. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people came to that realization uh, over the last couple months. And I think, I think that idea, like what you were talking about with Regis, where, where it's going to be more of a shared space, not, you know, not necessarily a WeWork kind of situation, but um, where, where you're just contracting out a couple of days a week or a, on an ad hoc basis, even where people, actually need to physically come together uh they're going to utilize it that way and save a ton of money yeah. r- rather than trying to maintain i mean people just walked away from their spaces because they couldn't they weren't bringing in especially the companies that were totally shut down couldn't bring in any revenue you know the last thing they want to do is pay for a, an office space that they were not utilizing not utilizing. Right. we're going to take another break we'll be back in just a minute everybody hang tight you're listening to the entrepreneurial web all right You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Hi, I'm Graham Dobbin. Join me every Thursday evening for the mind behind leadership here on talkradio.nyc. We speak to people from business, sport, military, and politics, all around what makes a great leader. 
the personal experiences of what's worked and maybe more importantly what hasn't worked. So that's seven o'clock every Thursday evening. The mind behind leadership here on talkradio.nyc. Listen to real stories of real leaders. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Okay, everybody, we're back once again. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox, here with my guest, Matt Perella. He is an EXP Realty Managing Broker in New York State, based in New York City. We've been discussing the fact that his company does not have an office. They've worked remotely. They've gone through a company called Regis, where they can utilize office space throughout the world, uh, essentially, wherever Regis has offices keeping the cost down. They also have a very interesting tiered system for recruitment and for profit share. What are some of the other ways, Matt, can you you uh, share with everybody that this, this type of company has benefited, especially its employees? Like you said, they get part ownership. They're not, uh, they're not tasked with the burden of paying exorbitant rents, especially in some of the high profile cities that they're in. What are what are some of the other benefits of this type of structure for its people? Because the people right now want to know the people are like, what the hell is going to happen in my company with if we don't have an office, then who are we like identity is out? What are some of the ways that your company has built identity within its its uh, employees and and uh, part owners along the way? Well, we are, we're interesting in the fact that um, there's a couple of different things I'll, I'll, I'll give to you here is Go. we don't have, we don't have a, um, I'm not going to name any other companies because it's not my place to do that, but there are other it's not companies that, it's not that, that kind of show, man. <laughs> and they give all kinds of comp, they get, oh, I want to get that team. So they give this one a special deal and that one a special deal and they buy other brokerages. We don't go out and buy people. We have this amazing package, this fantastic model. Your benefit is to come and be a part of it. And so me, as a managing broker running New York State, if you joined us today, you would get the same compensation package as me. We don't run around. There's no special deal. Everybody gets um, – you start each year in an 80-20 split. So you get 80% of your commission. Mm-hmm. When you hit – and I don't know who here is going to know what GCI is, but it's called gross commission income. Gross commission income would be the gross amount of commission – that I'm responsible for bringing in with us when if on an 80, 20 split, once you hit 80,000 in gross commission income, which I'll give you an example, particularly that's all across the country here in New York city. It's not, it's really not a big deal because I'll give you for instance, I got a friend who just joined us. He sold a, a nice brownstone, got $108,000 commission. You only, to, you only pay an 80, 20 split up to 80,000 and then you're hundred percent for the year. So this guy's now hundred percent split for the year. Yeah. I never had that where, and I knew him from the company I used to be at. Right. So our compensation package is much better because we're not paying for redundant salaries. We're not paying for, for big glass storefronts and, and copy machines. And you know, well, we're not paying for all that stuff because, Tax we, machines. <laughs> because we don't need to, you know, we don't need right. to, I can do a transaction a hundred percent for me, paperless. I put everything in DigiSign, send out my forms to be digitally signed and submitted back into what we call, we have Skyslope, which is our transaction management system. I'm not keeping file cabinets full of paper. Right. You know what I mean? We don't, it's just, that's. And who's, what's the company? You always see the trucks. I used to, when I was in ad sales, I used to get, uh, prepare all these boxes that they, they shred. They're like a. Oh, they have the truck that comes around. What is it like? Blue, blue something or iron something? I see. I still see them. Oh, I, 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 you know what it is? Like PTSD. Remember it. That's right. right. Exactly. Well, (laughs) but we used to get these boxes and boxes and boxes with like tons of paper, you know, and they would they would like mega shred it. We're saving the planet, right? Right. 
<laughs> well, well we don't this. we don't know what 5G is doing yet, but <laughs> did you see the stats on on a lot of urban areas around the country that with everybody not driving into an office every day, oh, yeah. the, the the pollution rate has gone is it was like gone yeah, down yeah. by half or more. The emissions, yeah, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. Uh, Sam just buzzed in Iron Mountain. <laughs> That's Iron what Mountain. it is. There you go. Iron Mountain. There you go. Sam, Sam must still do paperwork. <laughs> That's why he knows. <laughs> well, the office I used to work at, they um, where, I, where I used to have my license, they would um, they'd have the truck people. They, the sales manager would go around and be like, "Oh, everybody, you know, people's desks were piling up with papers." Yeah, get your shit together. Yeah, on Thursday, so and so is coming. Truck is at coming in the morning. Yep. And you would just see giant mounds of boxes of paper. And it was like, wow. Yeah. We now now we're, we're paying to shred that. Okay. Exactly. It's another it's another kind of unnecessary expense, and a lot of a lot of the industries have started. I know, um, like with with food and beverage, we used to have to keep like seven years of files. It was crazy, and now m- most things are three months. Uh, I believe uh, liquor invoices are a year, but but they we you've, they've they've really like. Put a cap do on they it let you do it electronically or do you have to keep paper receipts of everything? Um, we could probably do it electronic. I mean, the companies are still going to give us a, a, a paper invoice. Uh, we could probably keep it digitally on file in, in the store, but it has to be accessible in the store. So if like the liquor authority came in, we'd have to be able to, to immediately like with no, yeah, you don't want to no mess delay. with the SLA. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's not a fun thing to do. No, not interested in that. I'm being totally compliant, but the other, you know, the other, um, aspect of all of currency that, that we're starting to know that notice this in is, um, is, is credit cards and, and credit card receipts and like signing and like people, people don't even want to touch the, the thing anymore. You know, the, the, right. pad, the you know, they just, Every, people are tapping, people have it on their phone, people have it on their watch, and they just walk up and boop, and there's no receipt, there's no signature, you don't have to enter a pin, you don't have to touch anything. And I think from from a health and safety, but also a confidence standpoint for consumers, uh, credit cards want people to continue to use them as much as they are. And people are hardly spending cash, too, because same thing, they don't want to they don't want to exchange, yeah. they don't want to pass the germs. So paper money, paper receipts... Iron Mountain, man, you're you guys are in trouble. <laughs> this is Uh-oh. another industry, another. But that that's what I was saying uh, before we finished the last segment. Is like you're you're seeing this wholesale like Midtown and Lower Manhattan people just like vacating offices. Some will go back, some won't. Some will only go back to a partial operation, and it's going to domino effect. And we won't feel the repercussions of that until at, like the dust really settles from this. All the services that provided uh, assistance to those companies and then all the companies that service the services, you know? So it's just like, it's going to go boop, 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 boop. And we're going to, we're going to, it's going to be 18 months out probably before like the last domino really falls. And we see like, Oh man, those guys are out of business too. And whatever, you know, maybe like we were using too much paper and maybe that was a long time coming. I don't, you know, it, I'm not trying to to be like the judge or anything, but there, there, there was definitely, this exposed a lot of things about inefficiencies in oh, yeah. systems. And, you know, I know in my own places, we cut so many things just to survive. It was like, well, we don't need that anymore. And nobody really cares. Like what they want is like X, Y, Z. We're going to provide that. The rest of it, you know, we'll, we'll make do with it uh, kind of as we go. So from some of the other, you know, I mean, you, you've dealt in, in residential and commercial. What's your, what's kind of like the word on the street from your angle in terms of uh, especially Midtown and, and, and market values uh, for real estate? I, I've been, you'd be surprised. All right. So I, I, I do, um, I'm based out of New York city, but I manage the whole state. Right. Um, so I have people from Buffalo, you know, everywhere in between all the way down to the five boroughs, all five boroughs out to the East end of Long Island. And you are talking about Midtown. The interesting thing I've been talking about is office space. Okay. And the reason I think of it is if you go back to when, let's say Wall Street became more digitized, right? They don't have all those people running around yelling, holding up tickets anymore, like, like you know, Trading Places movie back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, if you, my cousin has a consultancy firm, um, it's a risk management firm, on, uh, and he used to be at 75 Wall Street. He's now at, um, he's on Hanover Square. He still, has, he still has a space. I don't, I don't think he's been going into it, but he has a space still in the financial district. Mm. Many of those buildings on Wall Street became condos. Already? 
Oh, you mean oh, since years ago? Forgot, yeah, yeah. 75, uh-huh. 85, right. 100, 110. They all became condos a long time ago. Right. He moved his office years ago to, to Hanover Square. And um, it'll be interesting to see what happens now because I have another cousin. She, she's um, got a great position, Bank of America, for a long time. She's one of the first people who were like, we can't have you get sick. You're not coming in anymore. Yeah. She's, she's has an office in, you know, the Bank of America Tower. Mm hmm. Diagonally across Sixth Avenue from from right. Ryan Park, right. like Forty Second Street. Right. I, I don't I don't want to make a prediction. I'm not doing that. But like, will they ever have that building packed again? I don't know. I don't know. Well, did they even know. did it ever get capa- to capacity? Because that building's only like ten years old. Did they even get it? Look, that's a good question. Old? I know my cousin was in there <laughs> working many hours every day, but um, was every desk filled in there? I don't know, but. They're talking about coming back to, you know, not just them. I'm talking in general. They're talking about yeah. coming back to 50%. So if you had mm-hmm. 200 people in an office, you're only going to have 100. So what is, you know, I well, know. How's that, you- that going to affect the price? Like com- like there's going to be an excess of inventory in terms of commercial real estate. And, and well, that someplace- becomes the interesting thing. Does every- yeah. I don't know. And again, it's not a prediction, but do do all these office spaces continue to exist as office spaces or do they... Some of them get converted to residential. I don't, that, that'd be the interesting thing to see. And I just look back and say an example of that would be Wall Street. Much of the financial district was, it was all offices and then became condos or high end rentals, right? Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to see if that happens again. And, um, you know, and then we, we, we talk about this, but what happens when, they, what if they do come out with a really great vaccine? Right. Everybody's I mean, going to be like, oh, it's not a big deal anymore. Snap right back. You know, boom. <laughs> Everything's, yeah, look, Does that happen? Right. There's Does certain it- things that, that I, I always, I'll, I ride the subways, right? When I, I want to go, go into the city, I'm, I don't mind driving to the city. I ride the subway, right? I don't touch everything. I see people, you know, I think there's, there's going to be a difference. Like people are going to learn like, yeah, don't grab onto the railing. Don't, don't sit on that bench. You know what I mean? Just stand up, ride the train and, you know, I see people, they touch, they touch every railing in, in yeah, the place yeah. and the handrails. And, and I'm like, oh, I never did. Long before right. COVID, I wasn't doing that. You know, it's right, just, right. <laughs> to me, it was always common sense. Yeah, no, I haven't. I, I agree with you. But from what I've seen interacting, I mean, I've been interacting with people every day this whole time, like not even an afternoon off working all day, every day. And there's been, you know, some adjustments, but I think they're like a solid 50 plus percent of people are just kind of like operating as normal, you know, not, not a big deal. So there is that opportunity or that chance that if there is some amazing vaccine, like a lot of people are just going to try to beeline right back to, uh, to the way things were before. Yeah. I mean, people want to get back to, I mean, we all want to go, you know, go out to a restaurant or, you know, you you just have, I mean, in you just real have to estate, sit outside. <laughs> in real estate, there's a lot of there's a lot of socializing. We're having right. a grand opening party. We're having a launch party. Let's just get together and everybody have some beers. You know, there's a lot of that goes on in real estate, and now it's and not the, going on. And the conventions too. You guys get together and have like big things. We and, just and, look at this year. I saw it last year. I was in Vegas. I was in Florida. I was in Boston. Right. This year, all those things we we have what we normally call the Northeast Spring Power Up. Northeast Spring Power Up event up in Boston, we canceled it. That was back going to be it was going to be the day before uh, St. Patty's Day this year. <laughs> then in April, I was supposed to be in Orlando. I had already bought a plane ticket. That's done. Probably, with, I think it would have been this month. I was supposed to be in <laughs> Vegas for EXPCon. Right, we we do two two big events a year. One is the EXP um, Shareholder Summit because we're all shareholders, right? Yeah. And then there's the EXP Con. Those are two main events a year. And then the spring, the Northeast Spring Power Up event is something we do Northeast, obviously. Uh, the, the broker up in, in, in Massachusetts started it. So we did it in 2019. This year, we didn't do any one of these three events. We, You know where we did them? Zoom. We did them in the cloud. Yeah. We still went in and people had, you know, but we just didn't travel to do it. I, I heard Florida's open, though. I think you guys could probably... <laughs> It, I, well, I think the okay. company looked at it and said, would it be responsible of us to have thousands of I think they would people? take you right now. I think they'd be like, yeah, you guys want to. Play? I'm kidding. All right. We're going to take one more quick break. We'll be back in just a few, everybody. You're listening cool. to the Entrepreneurial Web. See you in a minute. 
Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Are you a curious person, always asking questions? Do you desire to be in the know? Then join me, Antonia, host of So Now You Know, Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Listen in as I attempt to satisfy that curiosity. I will be talking with amazing everyday people. Join the fun. So now you know on Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com Okay, everybody, once again, you're listening to The Entrepreneurial Web. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox, here with my guest, Matt Perella, taking it back to the beginning of the show where I, I don't think Matt was here and heard this, the message of the week. If you got your head in the game, what you'll find is things don't often turn out the way you thought they would, but often the way you expected. This show, prime example, I was I didn't think you'd be looking at me the whole time. <laughs> In fact, there was a moment I was like, you might only be listening to me the whole time. Uh-oh, sorry about but, that. I, but I expected to have a fun uh, and insightful show, and, and we've gotten that so far. And then taking that a little further uh, with you, Matt, in terms of the industry, like going from where you started and it, where we're at now in terms of the way we transact going forward, do you feel like, your business's model is going to begin to like you were talking. What was the name of the company? The the tech company that you guys acquired. Verbella is part of VXP Verbella. World Holdings now. Yeah. So, do you see that now as like that's going to be kind of the wave of the future? Like thinking of like when we were kids watching you know, Star Trek and Star Wars and being like, "No, nah, we'll never, what? we'll never, we'll never do this." Like, see each other remotely and talk, and then boom! All of a sudden, this is like all we do every day. It's what, right. uh, <laughs> well. Well, here's, here's the interesting thing: is way before COVID. Okay, like I was saying, I, I knew somebody. They were at a company in, uh, was offered to go there and and um, had the coaching program um, and do some other whatever. Um, they spending a lot of money on rent. And somebody I knew who's who's at EXP would go in once a week, being up just stop in once a week, and they were paying for a desk. Okay, in addition to their splits, they had to pay to have a desk in the office. Mm -hmm. And they would take a picture and go, Matt, look, it's 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning. It's a work day. This section of the office has 100 about 180 desks, and there's two people there. Mm -hmm. I think the office had like 300 desks total. Another company I know that that friend of mine is at. He says, he says, you go in, it's like an airplane hangar. It's just empty, it's just big, empty space. So I think when I discussed this over a year ago with somebody, they were saying it's really about 5% of the people that go in on a regular, like, like really go in the office all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you, for instance, it's kind of funny, but somebody I know said, why don't you come and do this? You don't need the office. And and he was talking to a guy who was a little older, a little older than us and said, um, he said, what do you think I'm going to do? Stay home and, and, and deal with my wife all day? <laughs> Did I go in the office and get away from my wife? So he said, all right. So there's, there's always going to be some of that, right? I'm not I'm saying that's going to a thousand percent disappear. But but look, again, if I want to go into an office, I got 38 offices I can go to in Manhattan. Right. And there's a Regis office in downtown Brooklyn I can go. You know what I mean? So 
if I want to go in office, I'll go in an office. But I don't, I don't like the idea of I have to pay for this big office space, whether I use it or not. Yeah. Right. That doesn't, that to me is not. Cause you're paying uh, for it every second of the day. You're not just paying for it when you like when you, you have pay that for lease it around the clock, and you, and the responsibilities that come with that. Like often, if you have a commercial lease, you're you're you know responsible for repairs and maintenance within it. You know, if it's something oh. external on the building, but like if a pipe bursts in your space, guess what? You get to deal with it. Um, and and so it just it, it kind of snowballs. And I just you know I, something really struck me when you know there were a lot of restaurants have closed lately, uh, but this was a trend that had been going on for for a, a solid eighteen months. New Year's Day, two thousand nineteen, like several dozen quintessential New York City restaurants announced that they were they were closing their doors, and most of them, you know, there was there was you know obviously increase in minimum wage that affected a lot of them that that went into effect the day before. Actually, I don't know why, but it went into effect on New Year's Eve of 2018 but um but a lot of them cited uh exorbitant rent and i i will never forget reading the story of cornelia street cafe which i went to many times and saw lots of shows at and they were paying like 75 grand a month in rent now the place is maybe 2500 square feet i mean it's freaking tiny and I, I just like thought for a moment, like, well, yeah, sure, that's gross on the part of the landlord or management company, but but why were there not red flags going off at like twenty five grand? Like, this is unsurvivable at twenty five grand. How did it continue to go? I just feel like there was there was just a bunch of gross negligence on on both sides to just let this thing go so far, and then all of a sudden people are like. Oh yeah, no, it's crazy. We can't do this anymore. You know, the, where were the checkpoints along the way? Because I, like, for me, I feel every little fluctuation in my places. So just a little bit, and I'm like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 calm down. To like sign on for something like that, uh, to just well, let you, it. You just charge forty five dollars for a hamburger, right? But like, even then, that's <laughs> not enough. Like the basic rule of thumb for like brick and mortar, especially if you're like super transactional, if you're not like subscription based or something like that, it's just like you make money off of each and every transaction is that, you know, if you really want to make a profit, (laughs) if you want to survive and make a profit, you should be able to make your rent essentially in one day a month, like every month. So if your rents two grand a month, you should have at least one day a month where you're knocking down two grand, no problem. If it's 10 grand, you should be able to do that. How is a 2,500 square foot cafe going to be able to make $75,000 in a day? You need to charge a lot more for hamburgers than $45. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck is going on? You know, so it feels like, you know, the same way with the virus, it just got to this point and, and different responses and a whole heap of like misinformation. And then the same thing, I mean, we're seeing the same what's happening it, within the business community, within real estate, within so many things, and we talked about paper. Like, what else, what else did we miss? What other what other sicknesses within in like the business community did we not address today? <laughs> um, I know you got some. You got something. We haven't talked about sunglasses yet. Matt loves sunglasses. <laughs> I, I like my I like my sunglasses. Yes, <laughs> all year round. All always, year round. Always. Um, yeah, I, that that part just baffles me. How like it just. It was allowed to to kind of like, and I know for like somebody like you, I mean, you guys make more money off of that, right? It as it elevates everything. Like if businesses are charging that much for commercial rents, although residential uh, prices, uh, whether it's it's for sale or for rent, don't mirror that, but they they certainly elevate in response to that. Correct. Well, it's an interesting thing I used to look at, and there was there was a restaurant. I guess they decided to close because they retired, but there was a restaurant right off the of seventh Avenue in park slope and the food was very good. And they charged, they weren't cheap. They weren't, I wouldn't say it was super, mm-hmm. you know, it's New York. Nothing's really right. going to be cheap, but, but their, their shop was off the of seventh Avenue. And I was like, that's kind of brilliant because as soon as you go off the main Avenue, the rent goes way down, right? They, they weren't right on seventh. They, they were, were on, no, they yeah, were, yeah. you know, steps off, whatever, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 50 feet off of the main avenue sure think about that you got you got to be saving a, a, a ton of money in rent right it's probably half it's it, probably right half. you know on a dollar per square foot basis i'm sure so it um what's going to happen after all this it's it's an interesting thing that's what i'm saying i've been talking about office spaces you know even retail spaces i don't think mm-hmm. 
I don't think it's going to go away completely. No. But, you know, part of what feels that too is one of my vendors in, in Manhattan got out of the, they had signed a lease a long time ago. They had a beautiful space on a high, relatively high floor in, in downtown. And the owner of that company said to me one day, he goes, he goes, man, he goes, it's not just the rent. He goes, a dollar per square foot, I'm paying less than what anybody else would pay right now because I signed right. it some time ago, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful office space. But he said, a lot of my people, I have people working for me doing programming in India. I have people in Texas. I have people in New Jersey. He goes, the office, he goes, it's a beautiful office. But, but it wasn't just that. You know what really got him? It was a big, it was a big building. And his, he only had one portion of one floor, right? So there was people there with much bigger space. And he says, they keep raising. He goes, they're banging me on top of the rent over $4,000 a month just for yeah. my portion of the taxes. And he goes, that keeps going up. Mm-hmm. The taxes keep going up, right? So people don't always realize it's not just the rent. It's there's taxes, there's sewer and there's water. There's so you know, much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 sometimes you say, well, I can't believe they're charging this much for this food at this, at this restaurant. And then you go, yeah, but you don't know everything behind what, what, yeah. what it costs <laughs> to get that onto the table, right? Right. Uh, one of my favorite uh, restaurant personalities, David Chang, talks about that all the time. He's the owner of Mama Fuku. And he's like, people are not prepared to know what food should really cost. Like, if you really think, like, these restaurants should be here and these people should get a certain amount of pay for doing it and da-da-da-da-da, like, you just, the world is not ready. If you really saw what the bill should be, they would just, they'd be like, yeah, we're going to, you know what, we're okay cooking at home. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat my terrible we'll food. We'll stay in. So we're going to have to wrap up, man. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Even though yeah. we couldn't see you, next time we'll do it in studio when we get back to some sense of normalcy. Where can people find out uh, if they want to contact you or find out more about your company? Where should where would you like to direct them? Um, are you able to put up? Are you able to put up? Not right now. Or? I can put it in the comments, but just say it real quick. Like, bah, 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 bah. okay. It, it's so my email is Matthew M A T T H E W dot Perella. P A R R E L L A at exprealty.net is my email. It's easy, X ray Peter, exprealty.net. And my, my direct number is 646 458 1412. Again, that is 646 458 1412. And I'd be happy to hear from anybody who's, who's, who's in on this uh, radio nice. show. Awesome, man. Nobody's ever given out their phone number on the air before. That's pretty bold. You know like what? I said, my, my pr- phone number, I, I have <laughs> just about 950 agents now in New York. Okay. <laughs> Every one of them's got my cell phone number. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm like, you know what? All those, all those telemarketers are going to hit you up. All right. We oh, got to yeah. hop off, man. There's another show coming up. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll check in with you next week. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. Peace. Thank you, everyone. Jeremiah. I'll see you in the hood. Oh, you good. Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. Hi, I'm Graham Dobbin. Join me every Thursday evening for the Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. We speak to people from business, sport, military and politics, all around what makes a great leader. The personal experiences of what's worked and, maybe more importantly, what hasn't worked. So, that's 7 o'clock every Thursday evening. The Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. Listen to real stories of real leaders. 
Hey, all you crazy listeners. Looking to boost your business? Why not advertise on Talking Alternative with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply email at info at talkingalternative.com. Are you a curious person always asking questions? Do you desire to be in the know? Then join me, Antonia, host of So Now You Know, Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Listen in as I attempt to satisfy that curiosity. I will be talking with amazing everyday people. Join the fun. So now you know on Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network at www.talkingalternative.com. Now, broadcasting 24 hours a day. Talking Alternative. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. 